You see, on this channel, I ask the good questions. I'm not like these other channels that are like, How do I overcome rank stresses and continue to improve on my gameplay whilst maintaining my mental health? How do I lab characters efficiently? How do I come up with an impactful and thought out game plan? No. How brain dead is your Tekken main and how brain dead are you? Now this list will for the most part be based on online Tekken. I don't play in tournaments and I don't think that 90% of you guys do either but that's just a guess. So if you see that I put Kazuya in easy to play it's because it's based on online not high level me versus Arsenal Nash gameplay. So let's just get into it but first like subscribe. Comment. Comment an LGBTQ flag in the Lily Discord and let's get into it. Bow Dragonov, we are starting strong. This character is going into brain rot. It makes me sick how easy this character is. It genuinely makes my stomach curdle every single time I'm hit by Sneak 4. I don't think there is literally anything about this character that requires any amount of skill if I'm going to be completely honest. Probably the best mids in the game. Corny highs, broken lows, full strong throw game. Scrubs literally cream themselves at the idea of playing this character every day. If you're a blue collar worker and get home and play Tekken for an hour every couple of days, this is who you're gonna play. Brain Rock. Horang. Brain Rock. Okay, in all seriousness, for as much hate as Horang players get, this character definitely is a lot harder than most people tend to believe. Learning this character is already an uphill battle with his stances, how you move between stances, flowcharts, etc. is quite complex. And he does have a few weaknesses that are pretty exploitable. So realistically, he's hard. I'm going to be fair, moving on. Brian. Um, Brian is free. And that is going to ruffle a few feathers, but it's true. I have always said that you can play Brian without taunt, and he is a perfectly viable character. In this game, Tekken 8, it's even more true than ever. Stupid pokes, stupid counter hits, stupid keep out, and the most broken wall damage in the game. The damage is so absurd that I would go as far as to call it a carry. And that is one of the biggest reasons why Brian is free personally. To me, Brian mains, cry about it. Jin. Jin is the king of brain rot. Not a single brain cell is needed to play this character. I am not exactly active in the Tekken community. I talked to a few people, including a guy that has max rank on almost all characters in the game. And he says that Jin is the most free character in the game. And to be fair, I didn't even need him to confirm that for me. Everything tracks, everything does big damage, everything evades. Complete, perfected brain rot. Zhao Yu, Ling. Ling has a lot of broken stuff but you still need brain cells to apply that stuff. And she requires a lot more knowledge of the character than like a Dragonov, even though they both have similar tier broken things. There's a reason why this character has such a deep community of players. So, eh. I think she needs to go in eh. I think that's perfect. King. King is free. He's not quite brain rot. He's kind of like Ling. Where he has a lot of broken stuff, but you still need to know how to apply those things. However, Jaguar's sprint exists, therefore he's automatically free. Leroy. Leroy is like every character before Tekken 6. He's not fantastic in this game, pretty mid-tier, but he does have a fairly basic game plan. I believe he's got no mids, which can create some issues, therefore requiring you to think a bit. But yeah, Leroy can be somewhat difficult at times, especially against a good player who knows how to work him. So, every character before Tekken 6 seems like a good tier for him. Lily. I think that Lily is like... Lily. Lily is like borderline brain rot. 
there was a tear between free and brain rot, she would go there. So many click and win buttons, broken movement, so much weird crushing stuff. There's like some technical stuff with combos I guess, but there's just too much free shit for that to even be a factor. I think if this was like a Tekken 7 list, she'd be brain rot. It's just, the Tekken 8 characters level of brain rot is, is just different. It's just different. So, yeah. Shaheen. Now this guy is actual brain rot. You guys just don't know it yet. This is one of the easiest, most simple, yet most rewarded character in the game. You guys just don't know it yet. Trust me, pure brain rot. Pure brain rot. Reyna. Reyna is eh. This character has very strong strengths and very clear weaknesses. She's not exactly hard to learn, but to be actually good with her takes a lot of understanding and reps. So yeah, eh. Paul. After the last patch, Paul is free. I don't think I even need to explain why. You guys are in the trenches experiencing it for yourselves. So there you go. Kozia. Kozia is hard for sure. He's not in painful because I already know who's going in painful and nobody comes close to that degree of difficulty in my opinion. But yeah, Kozia has always been hard. Simple game plan, but technically very demanding. And it's not really something you can just opt out of like you can with Brian and his taunt. Like Wave Dash and Electrics are technically hard and are a key component of Kazuya's game plan. So yeah, I will say Kazuya is very brain dead at the wall, but that's about it. Bad combo damage, bad pokes, all or nothing character pretty much, which is hard. It's hard to get any kind of consistency from Kazuya. So I think every character before Tekken 6 is a good tier for Kazuya. Lee. Lee is free. He requires some execution with his just frames, but everything else is just complete nonsense. Constant 50-50s, constant counter hits, ridiculous wall carry. The difference in difficulty between playing this character and playing against the character is ridiculous. It's super stressful to be on your toes thinking about every option Lee has at any given time, whilst he's just clicking shit having the time of his life. So yeah, free as fuck, Victor. Victor is complete brain rot. His design is literally made for scrubs, which is literal brain rot. Enough said. Jack is eh. He's a good character. I don't know what more I can say. He's a good character that requires mid-level skill to be good with. I don't know, man. Eh. Laws. Laws is brain rot. Super spammy. Legitimately the most brain dead mix-ups in the game. In Heat, it's even worse. There is absolutely no counterplay to that. If I had brain damage, this would be the character I would play. Enough said, brain rot. Azucena. If Azucena still had her old while running 3-2, she would have been brain rot. But now she's just... Eh. Because she actually does require a fully functioning brain to use her now. Because she's a lot more unsafe and her while running 3-2 is basically a non-factor now. She still has good mix-ups, good low pokes, but yeah, pretty average Tekken character, in my opinion. Feng is free. He's not brain rot, because he does have a lot of moves that are all good in very different situations, and it can take some time to get accustomed to that. But once you do learn these things, everything is free. So yeah, Raven. Raven is hard. Raven is very hard. I think in this game, Raven has the hardest moveset to understand and learn out of any other character. He has a lot of weird and unorthodox moves that you don't necessarily see in other characters. So you're kind of just left to figure it out on your own. Add to the fact he's actually not even that good of a character in this game. It's quite a struggle for a Raven player. The reason he's not in painful is because I don't think a lot of people even bother to learn this matchup and Raven is a weird enough character to take advantage of that. But yeah, quite hard. Claudio, if Claudio was a better character, like higher on the character tier list, he would be brain rot. But for now he's free, incredibly easy to understand, incredibly easy to execute his game plan. This is pretty much another character that was just made for scrubs. So yeah. Free as fuck. June is brain rot. 
This is another character that needs no explanation. We've all seen June do bullshit, and we've all complained about June doing bullshit. So yeah, fuck June. Complete to brain rot. Alyssa. <laughs> I'ma be real with you guys. Alyssa might be the epitome of brain rot. I'm not gonna lie. You can legitimately play this character with three moves and heat. He is so rewarding and chainsaws are quite literally the most brain dead thing in the game. She also has strong movement. This is pretty much a training rules character. Brain rot. Like what else am I gonna say? I literally just said she was the epitome of brain rot. Where else am I gonna put her? Complete brain rot. Nina. Brain rot. I don't know what to tell you guys. She, she is. She's not as hard as so many people like to explain. Or say. Super oppressive. Broken chip damage. Broken damage in general. We all know what Nina is by now. Brain rot. Any degree of technical difficulty she had in Tekken 7 is gone. She is just ridiculous. Yoshimitsu is hard. Like Raven, just a super complex move list that's very hard to get a grasp of. Lots of very situational stuff you need to learn to apply. This isn't like a character you can play with 5 moves like Alyssa. You need to use the whole package for this character to really work. He is a good character, unlike Raven. You know what? Maybe Raven isn't painful. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Anyways, Yoshimitsu is like a super specialist character because of this. And specialist characters tend to be hard because a lot of time needs to be put into them. But yeah, Zafina is also hard. A lot of different stances that kind of all do different things. Zafina has a lot of weird interactions with other characters like crushing and stuff that you need to educate yourselves on as well as not being particularly great even with the buffs. Creating a game plan is harder than most but she does have some nonsense. She's not on this degree of hard in my opinion. Like all of these guys either have high execution barriers or like super complicated movesets and issues game planning. Like Zafina doesn't have any hard execution stuff and her moveset is like kinda complicated. So yeah, this feels like a good spot. Law. Um, I think Law is like eh. I don't actually think he's quite free. Slide mix up can carry a bit. But it's not as good as like Shaheen's or Lee's in my opinion. He's a good character that doesn't really have a lot of bullshit. Like at times he has strong frames but like I don't know Law is a hard one for me to judge. He's either an air or free. You guys decide man. I'll just put him in air for now. Kuma and Panda. Probably air right? They're pretty easy but they're not very good either. But I guess the game plan is there. Like, do chip damage, remove chip damage, bow. Like, there's nothing complicated here. Just, eh. Eh. Leo. Um, Leo is probably gonna be eh. A lot of s. Good all-rounder. I guess it takes some knowledge on how to use his install and stuff, but... I don't, mo I don't know much about Leo. Man, I'm just yapping. Go in, just go in eh. I don't even care about you. Steve Fox. Before the last patch, Steve would have been in painful. But now he's just in hard. Coming up with a game plan for this character can be quite challenging because his strengths aren't exactly clear straight away. There's also a lot of variance in the ways different Steve players play. He's got some hard execution stuff and matchup knowledge is pretty much required to play this character. Similar to Kazuya. So yeah, he's hard. He's also not great. Steve pretty much has the bare minimum to be a decent character, so that would naturally make playing him harder. But yeah, he's not as hard as Raven, so definitely just hard I think. Eddie is free because nobody knows the matchup. Now, Devil Jin. Devil Jin is the hardest character in the game. He's arguably the worst character in the game. And he already 
had a hard game plan to execute to begin with. Devil Jin pretty much has no redeeming qualities outside of a launching hell sweep, which will always be fantastic. But when you guys have bad mids to mix it with, it makes it a lot worse. This character is pretty damn awful and he's a Mishima. So you know what's up guys. This guy is playing on nightmare mode. Painful. The epitome of painful. Anyways, the last character is Asuka. She's pretty eh. She's got good stuff going for her. The general idea with her is to be a turtle. It's nothing overly mind boggling. There's no execution issues here. In fact, she's actually got a few things that are pretty free with her. Like her parries to a mid-tier player is like the most OP thing in the world. And she has gimmicky things like her ray chart. But she by no means is free. And that is how easy your character is. Do you main Jin? If so, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm pretty happy with this list. I don't think I need to change anything. So until next time.